So, you know, on one level, maybe the ecosystem services framework sounds uh, kind of obvious and simple, but to, but to really understand um, how useful it can be, it's good to work through an example. And an, a good example, a very famous example, is the story of the New York water supply. Uh, so this is an example of where ecosystem services thinking had a huge influence on decision making in a way that was beneficial for millions of people. And so the story of the New York water supply is that um, uh, New York, just like, like Canberra, um, was getting its water, or has for many, many decades, uh, more than a century, has its water supply based in some mountains outside of the city. So they had a, a, a watershed. So in Canberra, we have uh, the Brindabellas, a forested catchment that provides clean water. Uh, and in New York, most of the water was coming from an area called the Catskill Mountains. Actually, it's an area um, I've visited quite a few times because I have family connections there. And it is a beautiful landscape. And the thing about forested catchments is that they don't have many sources of pollution. And the forests and all the associated plants and animals and microorganisms and, and uh, plants down on the ground level and the roots and the leaves, all that stuff helps to actually filter water and so produce clean water. So forested catchments make nice clean water. But what was happening in New York over time was that the Catskill Mountains area that was the water supply for the city was slowly but surely being changed. And it was being changed by having um, the nature of farming changed. So more and more land was being used for more and more intensive farming. And that introduced more um, pollutants. So basically the waste from, from um, cattle in dairy production, for example. Um, and so you had more pollution and you had less of those um, forests that were otherwise meant to clean the water. And over time, the city began to realise, so this is a city of you know, more than 10 million people, that their water supply was no longer as clean as it used to be because of those changes happening up in the Catskill Mountains. And so they thought, well, the, the, the obvious solution to this, this is what cities do all over the world, is we build a water treatment plant. So the water's going to come in, it's going to be a bit polluted, but we're going to fix it up with a water treatment plant. And they did the, the maths on that, and these things are expensive, right? So it was going to cost them about $6 billion to build a water treatment plant. Uh, and then that was going to cost a quarter of a billion dollars to, to um, operate annually, every year. So a very expensive thing to do. So fortunately at that time in New York City, there were some more forward-thinking people that began to think, well, there might actually be a cheaper solution. So this really is not just about what do we, what do we like to do, but what's actually the, cheap, the, the cheapest and best solution. And they began to realise that if they could change the way land was being managed in the Catskill Mountains to reduce the amount of pollution that was running into streams and to increase the forests, especially along the, the riverbanks, um, then maybe they could get clean water back in the city and maybe they could get it for cheaper than the water treatment plant. And when they began to do the sums, do the modelling for how do we improve water, it became apparent that it's not just a bit cheaper, it's about one-eighth the cost. And so, and not only that, it, as well as being cheaper, it's, it's nicer. <laughs> so there's a benefit to the people of New York City because they have this beautiful environment, it's still a very beautiful environment that people like to visit, and it has all of these recreational values for the people of New York City. Um, in the same way that Canberrans have the recreational values of the Brindabellas, providing water for us and also providing beautiful places to visit. So they had that, and then the people that were living in that landscape actually benefited because they were getting money, the city was sending money to that region for better land management. That was helping farmers, and it was actually allowing farmers to put in infrastructure on their farms in a way that was helping their farming. So it was, it was one of these win-win scenarios that we always like to find in the world. And that's the, one of the exciting things about ecosystem services thinking, is um, if you get it right, then you find uh, opportunities that are helpful to people that cost less money. So the people of New York don't have to pay as, as many rates, and then the people up in the Catskills Mountains have actually got some infrastructure being provided to them for their livelihoods, um, and, and we were then left with a nicer environment to live in.